Preparing for the future starts with a choice. Choose growth with My Choice Investment. Discover investments suited for your aspirations. Invest within your budget and get started easily for as low as 1,000 pesos. Enjoy convenience with professional fund managers and an auto invest feature. Access investments anytime, anywhere with Metro Bank Online. With diversified products that suit your risk profile and investment horizon. Tap into local and global markets using Philippine Peso and U.S. dollar funds. Invest today, be empowered tomorrow with My Choice Investment. Visit your Metro Bank branch now or add to your portfolio via Metro Bank Online. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second episode of Tara Invest webinar series, Basics of Investing. I am Nicole, and I will be your host for today's episode. In this series, we aim to walk you through various financial concepts related to investments. And for this episode, our speakers will be sharing with you just that, including practical tips on how to start your investment journey. Make sure to stay tuned till the end for additional tips on how to understand your finances better and get started with your financial journey through My Choice Investment. Before we begin, let me remind you to put in your questions in the Q&A box during the presentation and we will answer them later on in the panel discussion portion after. Now to start today's webinar, I would like to introduce to you our speaker for this afternoon. He is a trust sales officer of Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group. His team specializes in maintaining and developing client and branch business relationships. He's also responsible for training and development and sales support of assigned branch distribution channel to enable them to understand UITFs better. Our speaker has over 10 years of experience in investments, insurance, and asset management. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lawrence Domingo. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Nicole. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for having me again. So this is the second episode of the Tara Invest webinar series. So today we're going to discuss the basics. So let's go back to basics now. So let's talk about the most common asset class. But before we do that, um, let us first define what is investment. So we can, can we start the presentation? Next, please. There you go. So investing explained. So investing is the act of allocating resources, usually money, with the expectation of generating an income or profit. So in investing, when you allocate your resources and when you, and when you allocate your funds, of course, your expectation is to generate income or profit. But you also have to consider that it comes with it two factors, risk and return. Okay. In investing, risk and return are the two sides of the coin. Low risk generally comes with low expected returns, while higher return comes with it higher probability of risk as well. But let's dwell into that later on. First, we need to define what are the types of investment. Okay, so we have two types of investment. First is the direct which talk about debt securities or fixed income or yung mga pautang or equities or yung pag-aari. With the other one, it's indirect or what we call the collective investment scheme. The examples of this are UITFs, mutual funds, and VULs. Okay? So let's dwell on uh, the, the direct first. Let's talk about the fixed income securities or the debt securities. Next. There. So... A debt security is an investment with which the investor loans money to an entity. The entity would either be a government or a corporate. And then that borrows, that entity borrows money or funds for a defined period of time at a specific interest rate. Okay? So debt securities are proof of indebtedness or pagkakautang ng humihiram. Okay. So the reason why it's called fixed income, it does not relate to the interest rate that comes with it. Fixed income, it's called fixed income is because there is a promised income stream. 
So that's why it's called a fixed income, meaning the evidence of indebtedness promises to pay you coupons or interest for a given period of time. Okay? So question, ang government and corporations umuutang? Yes. For governments, if they need to uh, raise uh, funds for expenditures ng government, they issue bonds. Ganon din ang, ang corporation. If they need uh, funds to expand their business, they issue bonds uh, to, to, to the public to invest. Okay? Some fun fact. Why are interest in bonds also co called coupons? Okay? For the younger millennials and Gen Z audience here, um, Previously or back in the days kasi when corporation or government issue bonds, nasa papel siya. And sa papel na yun, may mga maliliit na paper called coupons. Uh, it's something that you can pair. Pwede mo siyang punitin. And then yun ang ibibigay mo sa mga issuer. Okay, yun ang ibibigay mo sa issuer. That's why it's called coupons. So medyo ngayon, medyo digitalized na kasi rin tayo. No? Medyo digitalized na rin tayo. So, ang tawag na namin, scriptless na siya. So, delikado kasi yung may hawa ka ng bonds. Kaya usually, mga dating naka-invest dito, tinatago to sa mga, sa mga safety deposit box. Kasi pag nawala mo yun, wala ka ng proof na nagpautang ka. Hindi ka na rin makakuha ng principal, your principal na pinahiram, plus the coupon that comes with it. So, that's just some fun fact. Okay. Next slide, please. Let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of investing in a fixed income. Uh, let's start with the advantages first. Advantages is long tenors. No? So usually compared to time deposit, um, fixed income securities or fixed income funds can let you invest for a longer tenor. Uh, for for T-bills, usually yan yung mga less uh, than one year ang maturity May mga 91 days, may mga 182 days, may mga 364. So anything less than one year maturity, ang tawag dyan, T-bills. Or anything that is one year or more, ang tawag na dyan, either bonds or notes. Okay, so yun lang yung distinguishment doon. For corporate bonds, usually mga two to five years. And they also issue, some other companies also issue what they call the perpetual bonds or yung mga bonds na mga walang maturity. Okay. Second advantage is government guarantee. Take note that for government guarantee dito, it only applies to government issued fixed income securities. Ah. Okay. What do you mean by government guarantee? By hook or by crook kasi, they have to pay their liability or those na nag-invest sa fixed income nila. How? Because government can print money. So that's what, what you mean by government guarantee. So another question, which is more riskier, government securities or corporate securities? If you answer government securities is less riskier than corporate securities, you are correct. Kasi nga, from the fact na uh, anything happens unless the government defaults, they can pay for the coupons of those lenders na nag-invest sa initial nila bonds. Kasi nga, so you're okay bonds rather than corporate bonds, hindi naman. Corporate bonds, before they also issue um, mga fixed income securities or mga bonds, they also undergo credit worthiness. Okay? And usually nga, um, when, when corporations issue bonds, usually mas pataas yung interest rates na government bonds. But that's more of advisory level. So slightly, slightly higher returns. Slightly higher returns, of course, compared to time deposit, compared to savings. Yan, mas mataas naman ang bigay ng, ano, ng, ng high, higher return naman ng ating bonds. Okay? Some of the disadvantages, it's still subject to mark-to-market vol volatility. Uh, why? Because bonds can be traded even before its maturity. Yan. Nagkakaroon tayo ng mark-to-market volatility kapag tinetrade siya in the market. Okay. Again, it's also subject to 20% withholding tax and usually high minimum investments. With our institution, for you to invest in a government bond or a corporate bond, usually we require at least 500,000 to invest. There are some other institutions medyo lower, but I think the lowest na narinig ko, correct me if I'm wrong, is I think 50,000. But 50,000 is still a high number or a large number for some of us, right? 
So next slide, please. Let's discuss how the bonds work. Okay, so let's say you invest in a Metro Bank three-year bond. You invest five million. That's your principal. You were given a, a rate of around six point two fifty percent. So your per coupon, okay, per coupon. If it's quarterly, then it will give into you quarterly. It's around fifty six thousand two hundred fifty. For the year, it's around two hundred twenty five thousand. And if you held it until maturity of three years, you get the six hundred seventy five thousand interest plus, of course, your five million principal. So that goes per end. Ganon din na same procedure with Metro Bank five year or seven year or even twenty five years if you're going for a twenty five year bond ng government. Okay, so that's how the bond market works. So somehow dito, san san the come in yung mark to market dito. Later we'll discuss in the next slide. We'll discuss kung paano ba siya nagiging mark to market. Kasi if you're going to hold on maturity or what we call what we call HTM or hold to maturity, somehow hindi mo iintindihin yung mark to market volatility. Kasi intay mo lang yung coupons, intay mo lang yung maturity, you'll get your principal back plus the interest. But yun nga, if you plan to um, if you plan to trade or if you plan to sell the bonds that you have, then pwede naman siya. But it's subject to mark to market value. So next slide tayo. Discuss natin how it works. Okay. Disclaimer lang. These are just for illustration for you to appreciate. Kasi bond yields and prices are related. Okay. So let's say um, the Bureau of Treasury natin issues a bond with the prevailing interest rates of around 3.5%. So 3.5%, let's say, yung nakuha mo five years, okay? So ang principal mo or the, the principal that you gave or you invested is around 1,000 pesos. Nilita na lang natin figures for better understanding and for easy computation, okay? So the bond will pay you a value of 1,000 pesos, okay? So let's say five years old. Next year, four years na lang remaining, you want to sell your bonds this time. But the, the prevailing interest rates falls to 2%. Or yung presyo ng mga four-year bond, 2% na lang siya. Okay? So malamang, yung binayad mong 1,000 should, should be paid by premium by the buyers. Di ba? Hindi, mo, di na, di na bibilin sa market yan ng 1,000 kasi ang hawak mo 3.5% and the prevailing interest rates for a four-year bond, your remaining number of your of the bonds that you have is 2% lang. So dapat bayaran sa'yo or i-trade yan ng what we call at a premium price. Okay, so balik tayo naman natin situation. Let's say you still have the 3.5% bond with 1,000 principal. And then next year, four years na lang siya, gusto mo siya i-trade. What if the interest rates rises at 5%? Malamang in the market, when you want to sell your four-year bond, and ang prevailing rates for the four-year bond ngayon is at 5%, malamang hindi na bibilin sa'yo yan at 1,000. Bibilin na yan sa'yo ng mas mababa. Okay? Hindi na bibilin yan sa'yo ng 1,000 ng original price na bilin mo kasi ba't nila bibilin ng premium? Eh, ang prevailing rates is 5%. Ang hawak mo lang is 3.5%. Okay? So, they're going to buy it at a discount na lang. Okay? So, that's how the bond yields and prices are related. Okay? Question? Later? Question later. Okay. So let's discuss naman. The next slide, please. Yan. What are equities? Equities are pag-aari or katunayan ng pag-aari. Okay? So this is different from fixed income. Fixed income is proof of indebtedness or pagkakautang. This naman, a stock is a type of security that signifies ownership in a corporation and represents a claim on part of the corporate's assets and earnings. So income is gained from increase in stock prices and dividends. Okay, So there are two types of equity shares. One would be common shares and the other is preferred shares. So okay. let's distinguish the difference between the two. Ang, ang, ang common shares and preferred shares when it comes to dividends, dividends with preferred shares can be promised a dividend payment subject to, to, to retained earnings of the company or sobrang kita ng company. Okay? So when it comes to retained earnings or excess income, pag may excess income or may dividend si, si company, ang unang bibigyan is preferred shares. Pangalawa lang si common shares. So yun ang difference nila. Okay? 
if walang retained shares or walang retained earnings pala si si company are they obliged to give dividends to preferred shares hindi po kasi po ang equities is proof of ownership hindi po siya proof of indebtedness or pagkakautang okay so when it comes to company naman when the company closes and the company liquidates sinong unang babayaran ang unang babayaran as well si preferred shares tapos si common shares but above all kung meron silang initial bonds si bonds muna din ang uunahin nila before preferred shares so ganun ang hierarchy okay so question is it better to invest in preferred shares than common shares for me it depends if you're looking for a consistent dividend payment then you have to go for preferred shares but if you're more of Um, stock appreciation or stock price appreciation mas may better chance ka of stock price appreciation with common shares okay so that's that's uh that's one of the caveat okay when it comes to voting rights naman uh usually kasi when it comes to equity uh equity ownership or stock stock ownership may mga annual shareholders meeting yung mga company na yan For voting rights naman, ang preferred share owners doesn't have the right to vote. Okay? For common shares, they have the right to vote. They vote either who are going to be the members of the board or any initiatives na kailangan pagbotohan ng mga shareholders. Okay? So next slide, please. Okay, so let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. So again, advantages is long historical track record. Again, when you invest in equities, Think of it as you are a part owner. Okay? You share the growth of the company over the long run. That's why in, in investing in equities, it really involves long-term investing. Yun naman palagi namin sinasabi. We highly encourage that you invest in a stock market. You have to have a long time horizon in mind. Okay? For example, no, Metrobank. Metrobank did not start at the onset ng mga 700 branches, di ba? Metrobank started with one or two branches until the very present, tsaka na lang siya after, what, 50, 60 years already, tsaka na lang siya naging 700 branches. So when you invest in an equity or stock, think of it as you are a owner of that stock or that company. Okay? Potentially high returns. Comparing it to deposits and bonds, yes, potentially. The word is potentially. You may have higher returns than deposits and bonds. Okay? For voting rights, again, like what I mentioned earlier, preferred shares doesn't have any voting right. Common shares ang merong voting rights. Okay? When it comes to disadvantages, ang equity fund or ang stock market investing is more volatile than investing in deposits or bonds. Okay? You know naman that the price appreciation in the trading A session every day in the Philippine Stock Exchange, may kita mo yan, the prices goes up and down, right? And there's also the uh, the factor of capital loss. Hindi guaranteed ang ating investment when it comes to stock investing. So there's also capital loss. And of course, you also have to consider broker's fee or taxes. Okay? Next slide, please. Let's discuss how equities work. Yeah. So how does equity work? Equity works is you're buying into the company. You're buying shares of the company. In this example, let's look at Ayala Corporation. So uh, for this example, it, uh, the client or the investor was able to buy around 20 shares. The average price would mean what would be the average price of the total shares that na bought the client. Okay? So in this case, it's 742. That's the average price. If you're going to trade it, let's say today, the price of Ayala became 927 pesos. So that's your price appreciation in the stock market or in the, in the company that you bought. Okay, so most likely, ang principal niya nasa mga 15,000, it grew by around 3,500 or 23% return of investment. Okay, question. If ganyan na situation, the all green and all gain or loss, is it already a gain? The answer is it depends. Kung hindi mo pa siya binebenta, kung hindi mo pa binebenta yung 20 shares mo of Ayala, then yung 18,000 more, your 3,530 is not yet a realized gain. Paper gain lang siya. 
The same goes if i-reverse natin, let's say negative yan, hindi pa naman siya talagang loss until such time that you sold your shares. Okay? So ito yung concept na buy low, set high. So whenever you buy into a stock or you buy shares of a company, your strategies, strategies should be buy low and sell high, not the other way around. All right? And also, you have to consider uh, there's also minimum investment with called when you invest kasi in the stock market, may mga what we call the minimum board lot or yung mga minimum number of shares that you can buy. Kapag medyo mahal na yung stock, let's say mga 1,000, 1,200, usually ang mga board lot niya nasa mga 10. Yan. Pag medyo mura-mura yung stock, like mga 4 pesos, 5 pesos pa lang yung presyo ng stock, usually mga board lot niya nasa mga 100 or 1,000. So there's always a minimum number of shares that you buy per stock. Hindi pare-pareho. Okay? Next slide, please. Okay. So let's talk about the risk-reward trade-off. Okay? So what makes an investment risky? Yan. Bakit nga ba may hierarchy yan na si deposit, si bonds, si stocks, iba-iba ang risk? It's actually affected by three factors. Time, inflation, and uncertainty. Okay, let's discuss time. Bakit factor ang time when it comes to riskiness of an investment? Ang tanong, are all investments have the same risk? Of course not. Diba? Let's say for a one-month deposit, it doesn't have the same risk as a 10-year deposit. Why? Because at time or duration increases, the investment becomes risky regardless of the investment vehicle. Okay, so mas, maray, mas mala, malayong time or mas mahabang time ang ginugugol mo for investing in a certain investment vehicle, mas risky na siya. Kasi hindi mo alam kung ano mangyayari. In one month time, medyo less risky siya because you know in, in one month makukuha mo yung investment mo. But let's say, i-deposit mo yan for 10 years. Are you already certain that you will get your money back in 10 years? Hindi. So that makes an investment risk risky. Okay. Another thing is inflation. So let's say you deposited 100 pesos in an account that gives you 2% at the end of the year. Okay, so 100 pesos, it became 102 at the end of the year kasi nga, it was given to for 2% na, na interest at the end of the year. So is it safe? Is it okay already? My answer is no. Because inflation, let's say inflation in the Philippines is averaging around 4 to 5%. So the inflation is 4%. So Ano nga yung nangyari? Imbes na kumita yung pera mo or nadagdagan yung buying power ng pera mo, hindi pa siya nakasabay sa inflation rate of 4%. Okay, the, the, the 4% is again uh, something that is hypothetical number yan. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean na pag ang inflation rate in the Philippines is 4%, automatic 4% nag increase ang mga canned goods or yung mga karne sa, sa palengke. No. So it's a gauge of how prices of goods and services increase that makes or decrease the buying power of the money that you, that you have. So that's inflation. So we're actually all affected by inflation. We cannot say that we're not affected by inflation. Okay? And the last one would be uncertainty. That's why it makes the, the investment risky. Risk is the probability of loss due to uncertainties. Okay? So, mas uncertain ka sa mangyayari, mas risky. Okay? So, like, like our example previously, yung ating one-month deposit versus a 10-year deposit, of course, mas risky yung 10-year deposit kasi hindi mo alam kung anong pwedeng mangyayari in the economy, in the company, or in the bank, or whatever, in 10 years. That's why it's if it's more uncertain for that investment, mas risky siya. Okay? And let's also try to change yung ating mentality or ating thinking about, we've heard about this, yung, yung risk-reward trade-off, that the higher the risk, the higher possible return. According to our in-house CFA, si Don Hernandez, kulang daw yun. Okay? Because when you invest in high-risk investment, it doesn't guarantee you high return. Okay? So the risk-reward rule should be the higher the potential risk, the higher the potential income. Okay? The word is potential. Hindi pa rin siya guaranteed. Okay? So I hope you understand. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so let's compare the asset class of cash, bonds, and equities. When it comes to risk, possible returns, does it beat inflation, and how it earns, okay? For cash, of course, low risk lang siya eh. Di ba? I mean, tago mo lang sa banko yan or even hawakan mo, huwag lang siya mawala. So, parang technically zero to none ang risk niya. When it comes to possible returns, again, if it's cash, it doesn't grow. If you put it in a savings account, it will grow but not exponentially. Di ba? So, it's quite low. Will it beat inflation? Okay. Savings account right now, I doubt that it will give you more than 1% annually. Okay? Minus the taxes pa. Okay, so it, it's improbable of in beating inflation. So how it earns, again, deposit rates or interest on deposits. How about bonds? Bonds had, have medium risk. Okay? Possible returns would be as well medium compared to cash or deposits. Will it beat inflation? It depends. So it's probable. Okay? So it depends. Kasi kung makukuha mong bonds and you will hold on to maturity for that bond, and below siya na, the, the, the inflation rate, the prevailing inflation rate, then baka hindi rin niya ma-outperform yung inflation. How does it earn? Again, like what I've discussed earlier, it earns through coupon payments or price appreciation. How about equities? Equities are have the highest risk. Possible returns are also high. Will it beat inflation? Most probable. Di ba? Hindi pa rin siya sure. Hindi pa rin siya guaranteed. So, depende pa rin sa hawak mo stock. Will it outperform inflation? Will it underperform inflation? How does it earn? Again, like what I've discussed earlier, through price appreciation or through dividends. Okay? Next slide, please. Okay. So, what is a fund? Let's discuss naman indirect. Kanina, discuss natin direct investments. No? Ngayon, discuss natin indirect investments. Next slide. Let's talk about collective investment skills. Oh, um, collective investment scheme. It is an investment vehicle. It provides access to the financial markets. I think uh, one of the reasons why nagkaroon ng mga collective investment scheme is for retailers like us to have access to those financial markets that I've mentioned. And also to provide professional fund managers. Kasi diba, it's hard to invest into something that you have little knowledge of. Right? It's quite dangerous to invest into something na medyo minimal ang kaalaman nyo regarding that investment. So they, they actually form this kind of fund for you to invest in para you have access to those financial markets and also with the help of those fund managers that will invest on your behalf. Okay? Next slide, please. Okay. So... How does my choice investment work? My choice investment is Metro Bank's pool of UITF funds or Unit Investment Trust Fund. So yun ang UITF, ha? Unit Investment Trust Fund. How does it work? It's an open-ended pool trust funds in any acceptable currency operated by trust entity and made available by participation. So parang you're buying into a fund. So the, the, the good thing about this is hindi lang kayo isang investors dito. Because we pull investors, we are able to accumulate enough capital to access those financial markets na malalaking pera lang or institutions lang ang may access. Okay? Or mga individuals lang that can invest high amounts of investment, high volume. Okay? So you, you invest in the fund, hindi lang isang fund, ng mga UITF companies, several funds yan, it's always priced every day. So you buy into the fund. Every day yan may price. Whenever you subscribe, may price yan. May price yung fund. Okay? So you buy into the fund, you, it is converted into units. Kaya that's why it's called net asset value per unit or NAVPU. Kasi may price yung fund na yan every day. So after that, anong ginagawa ng fund manager? is sa accumulated na funds. Of course, they invest it this time to those financial securities okay, that I mentioned. Usually naman, ang pinag invest ng UITF are more of fixed income, uh, time deposits, mga liquid asset, liquid, liquidity assets, and mga equities. So yung mga minensyo ko kanina, yun din lang din naman yung pinag invest ng fund manager. Okay? So at the end of the day, we, that's why ang pricing natin always at the end of the day is because we have to compute for the aggregate value of those assets pa. Kaya kailangan namin hintayin na mag-close ang market bago namin makompute what would be the return so that we will be able to know or provide 
what would be the income of those investors. So ganun ang cycle niya. First you invest, you subscribe to the fund, unlimited din ang subscription, anytime you want to subscribe, may mga available shares yan. Okay? Fund manager will invest it into financial securities and kung ano man yung aggregate market value ng mga securities na yun, i-compute namin para malaman namin at the end of the day what would be the price of that fund at the end of the day. Okay, so it is as if, um, what if, may mga questions na gato, what if mag-close yung fund or mag-close yung company? Actually, if we're uh, computing for the price per unit every day, it is as if we're already closing the company or the fund eh. Kasi yun na yun eh. That's why it's called net asset value per unit because yun na yung uh, net, net value nung, nung fund na yun at the end of the day. So can you also redeem every day? Yes. Okay? Basi nga, may pricing tayo for the fund every day. Okay? Next slide, please. Okay. So let's compare naman yung ITF with other investments. For me... Um, again, checking and savings, advantages niya, liquidity, uh, may ATM ka, you can easily withdraw. Returns are guaranteed. No? Uh, wala naman yatang uh, hindi guaranteed na principal when it comes to the savings account or current account. No? And it is insured by PDIC but only up to 500,000. No? Um, the advantages niya are minimal returns. Compared to time deposits, again, higher than savings, uh, savings account. Returns are also guaranteed, insured by PDIC, but also with the advantage, disadvantage of minimal returns or there's also pre-termination penalty fee. So let's say uh, you, you availed of a, of a six-month uh, time deposit kapag nangilangan ang pera, you need to pre-terminate it. May mga pre-termination fee yan. And then again, uh, you, with UITF or with Unit Investment Trust Funds, um, for me, mas marami advantage eh. For me, mas maraming advantage, especially if you're looking for investments that are better than savings and time, time deposit. Kung baga sa hierarchy, if you're looking for a much better return than time deposit, unit investment trust fund would be for would, would be the perfect product for you. Yes, there the, the returns are not guaranteed. It's not insured by PDIC. It's not insured by PDIC because it's not a deposit. It's an investment, but you know the 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 possibility naman or the potential return naman in investing in UITF is better than time deposit or savings or checking account okay next slide please okay so let's talk about types of my choice investment all right so there are classifications in UITF hindi lang siya isang fund no may mga several funds tayo that you can choose from depending on your your appetite your risk appetite, depending on your objective, depending on your time horizon. For those who have conservative risk appetite and have a shorter tenure or short-term horizon in mind when it, when it comes to investing, they can go for the money market funds. So this one is invested principally in short-term or fixed income deposits. Usually, ito, ang composition ito, um, mga time deposits, not only of Metrobank, but all other institutions as well. Um, and a uh, short tenor na mga government securities. Usually, yung kanina binanggit ko yung mga T-bills na mga 90 days, 180 days. So, yung mga shorter tenors of the GS. Okay, but these are for conservative investors. Medyo, ano tayo, more of the low risk tayo when it comes to money market investment. Okay, if you want a much better, if you, if you have, let's say, um, short to medium term investment, uh, you can go for bonds, the bond fund. Bond fund is invested mainly on uh, fixed income securities like the corporate bonds or the government bonds with longer tenor. Usually, ito, ang mga tenor nito, mga uh, more than one year to five years. So, yan ang tenor niya. Okay? But if you want a fund, na a mix of bond fund and equity fund, what we have is the balance funds. Okay, that's why I call, it's called balance because it's a combination of bonds and stocks. Okay, so if you have, let's say, a medium to long term, yeah, pwede kang mag-balance funds. And if you want naman, if you're an aggressive investor, you can go for an equity fund because the equity fund, most of the, no, until 90% of the fund is invested into equities or stocks. So these are for your long-term investment goal. Okay, next. Next, let's talk about the benefits in investing in my choice investment. No? First is affordability. Uh, for our funds, 
uh, there across all funds for a peso funds usually you have like say 10,000 no to invest or we have actually a fund na you can invest for as low as 1,000 so just imagine the affordability no uh, for others if you're going for direct investment magkano kagad ang initial na kailangan mo and if you have that money baka yun lang ang mabili mo right so hindi ka na makakabili ng ibang security because medyo limited pa ang capital mo for but for UITFs or for my choice investment usually because of the pooled fund di ba hindi lang isang investor hindi lang ikaw investor maraming investor uh, mas mababa ang minimum capital for you to invest okay professionally managed again like what i've said um, it is uh, managed by fund managers they are experts in their field uh, they can they are the ones who can read the market time the market no for me kasi when it comes to investing either direct or in, indirect um, i compare it to driving okay so whenever you drive if you're directly investing parang ikaw yung driver di ba parang ikaw yung driver you you hold on to the wheels uh, you step on the brake or the gas and then you plan for your routes no or you know or ikaw sa kapupunta but with indirect investment like my choice investment at least in this scenario you still in the car but you have a driver di ba parang ganun so it's either in 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 you in in collective investment schemes no parang it's either in investing is either you do it yourself or you hire a professional if you invest in my choice investment you are like hiring a professional or a driver that will decide where best to invest. That's the advantage of professionally managed. Okay? So better earnings potential, again, because of the diversification and because of the availability of the funds or, or of the allocations or kung saan siya naki-invest, of course, it will have different returns, but it will be better if you have only a limited number of investment to invest in direct investments. Okay? Again, I talk about diversification. And sabi nila, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Di ba? So uh, UITFs or My Choice Investments already offers you instant diversification. Again, when you invest in the fund, because malaki na nga yung fund and marami kong investors, fund managers can choose what are available uh, financial instruments there are in the market. So your 10,000, let's say your 10,000, invest mo sa stocks. Baka ilang companies lang mabili mo ng ng 10,000 mo. But when you invest in a My Choice investment or in a UITF investment, yung 10,000 mo already exposed to at least siguro 50 stocks, 50 or 60 stocks. So di ba, instant diversification siya. Liquidity. Ito wala tayong mga pre-termination. We, we only have a holding period. I'll discuss later what would be the holding period for the funds. But when it comes to liquidity, unlike stocks, no, unlike stocks, kailangan may bibili. No, kailangan may handang bumili at that price. With, with this one, you can easily subscribe, subscribe sa fund by units, and you can also redeem your new units each transaction day or each banking day. Okay? For convenience naman, uh, you can actually transact via MB online. So no no constant monitoring. So the the advantage of having my choice investment right now is it is available already sa ating MB online. So it's quite convenient pati sa website natin we also publish yung ating mga price dun sa uh, per fund ah, dun sa website natin. Okay? Next. Okay, for me, are there any risks? Of course. It's not insured by PDIC and the returns are not guaranteed. But for me, the the benefits of investing in a my choice investment or UITFs are far more bet are far more heavier or are, are far more important than the risk involved in investing actually if you don't invest there's also risk in not investing okay next slide please all right so some importance of diversification again if you are well diversified, you are managing the risk of loss compared to kung ang security mo, isa lang, di ba? If marami kang securities, of course, it behaves differently. So medyo mamamanage, mamamanage mo yung risk and sa loss, di ba? Um, reducing volatility as well. Again, you're not exposed to just one security. So you're reducing each volatility of the asset class that you have in your fund. No? And of course, again, because of uh, 
of a lot of securities in the fund, you also maximize the potential return of each of the fund or your investment. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so for some that are asking, how can I tolerate risk or how much can I tolerate risk? No? So this, this uh, chart or this, this presentation will show you what would be the risk appetite depending on your life stage. Okay, so above is the early childhood, 0 to 15, young professional, 16 to 25 years old, forming a family, 26 to 39, career development, yan mga 40 to 60 years old, and of course, our inevitable retirement at 60 to 80 years old. So let's categorize them according to goal, expected return, risk appetite, and liquidity. Of course, when you're young, early childhood, no? 0 to 15 years old. So your goal is, of course, pakatapos, education. Expected return, sarap mag-estudyante, no? Parang wala kayo expect na return. Or risk appetite mo is none. Kasi parang you cannot invest pa rin naman at the age of 15, eh. Diba? You can only invest at the age of 18. Liquidity, again, you just rely on allowances, diba? Sarap talaga maging bata. Eh. Uh, liquidity is low. So when, when, when you become a young professional already, your goals change. Hindi na siya education. Or usually, there's continuous education kung magmamasteral ka. But you have to focus on career and vacation or leisure. So pang-single, mga pang-single life. No? So yun ang goal mo. So your return expectations would be high. No? Kasi bata ka pa eh. And you're, if, you, if you intend to invest in a long-term horizon, you can invest in an aggressive or risky assets. So your expectations are high when it comes to return. Risk appetite naman, again, high. Kasi you have a longer time horizon for you to invest. Diba? You can ride the volatility of the equities market when you're young diba? compared to your old. Liquidity naman, usually naman, yan, eh, sarili mo lang niisip mo, so yung mga daily gasos mo lang. So liquidity, medyo nan. Kasi sumasweldo ka naman yan, eh, continuous na sweldo mo yan. Ngayon, pagdating mo sa 26 to 39 years old, uh, you're already forming a family. So, of course, your goals already change. Uh, usually, ang goal mo niya, vacations, it's estate planning, estate planning for your family. Especially pag may family ka na, you're the breadwinner. You have to be uh, planning for your estate already. Okay? So, ang expectations mo niya, somehow, return expectations would be low. Risk appetite mo, medyo moderately high na siya. So medyo parang pa, ano ka na nun, pa, pababa ka na when it comes to risk appetite. And for liquidity yan, because of, let's say, college education na siya or your education for your children, yan dyan na yung may mga mortgage ka na, may car loan ka na, may mga home loan ka na. So liquidity, liquidity mo medyo high na. Di ba? Kasi marami ka ng responsibilities. And for career development stage, let's say 40 to 60 years old, yan, di ba nalalo ang goal mo yan. Medyo you're after the legacy or after your retirement already, malapit ka na mag-retire niya pag 40 ka na eh, di ba? And your children's future. So kung ma, uh, pagpaaaril mo ng college or magdo-doktor pa ba yan after college, mag maglo-law school pa ba yan after college. So your return expectations medyo balanced na siya. Okay? Your return expectations medyo balanced na siya. Risk appetite mo medyo balanced na rin. Again, alright? And liquidity mo medyo balanced na rin. Okay? Why balance? Kasi somehow if you were able to focus on your career as well, medyo nakapag-establish ka na rin yan ng career. Nakapag-ipong ka na rin yan, right? So, parang medyo balance na lahat. But when it comes to retirement, look at this. Iba na yung ano mo yan. Yung goal mo yan. Marriage mo yan. Oh, well, yeah. If you're still married in, in children and insurance, ang return expectations mo medyo low na kasi ang investment horizon mo medyo short na eh. You cannot already tolerate aggressive investments. Okay? So, ang risk appetite mo, yan, mababa na rin. And liquidity mo, medyo high. Why, why high ang liquidity ng retirement? Again, wala ka ng, baka wala ka ng source of income yan. Retired ka na nga, eh. sorry, you're not yet, nor no longer employed. Plus the fact that when you grow old, the reality is marami ka ng education, madalas ka na ng hospital, so your liquidity is high. So, your goal should be from the early childhood to career development, dapat nandyan yung wealth accumulation mo. Okay, dyan mo na nababalance yung what is your risk appetite, what is your time horizon when it comes to investment. Para pagdating ng retirement mo, wealth preservation ka na lang. Or what we call living on interest ka na lang. Okay? So I hope it's clear. Next slide, please. So before you start to invest as well, 
try to remember this. You have to remember your path. Yeah. So what is your purpose of investment? You need to have a purpose in investing. Okay. And what purpose is it for you to buy a gadget in the next three months? Is it for your dream vacation in next year? Is it for your dream house in the next five years? You need to have a purpose in investing. Para malama mo din which product, which financial instrument would cater to your purpose. Okay, so yun ang importante. Palaging dapat may purpose ka. Sa ko ba in- pag invest ko to dito, para saan ba to? Ano bang goal ko dito? Okay. A is for what is your appetite or appetite for risk. Okay. You also have to determine what is your risk appetite. How much risk can you ta- tolerate? How much risk can you take? Should you take this um, achieve? Should you take this um, product para ma-achieve mo yung goal na yun? Right product ba to? Is the risk inherent in this investment the right one for you? So you have to determine ano may risk appetite mo. With time horizon, yan, it's also very important. Uh, with time horizon, it's not a one-size-fits-all. No? Your time horizon should be also fit kung ano yung ating investment horizon or gan ba katagal or gano'ng kaiklik yung iyong uh, investment horizon. For hurdles naman, yan yung what are your hurdles like you have, you have little knowledge about investing, you lack the experience, you lack the time. So what are your hurdles to overcome that? Kasi may mga investment available for you that will help you overcome those hurdles. No? So remember your path whenever you invest. So next slide, please. Let's discuss naman yung my choice investments natin or yung mga options mo for investing in my choice investment or the UIPFs available in Metrobank. We have actually the Aspire Feeder Funds. Uh, meron yung pang-conservative, merong moderate, meron pang-aggressive. The only unique feature of this Aspire Funds, ito yung minimum investment namin of 1,000. Okay? But the caveat here is this has an auto-debit feature. Yung auto-debit feature natin initially, ang build-up niya, two years. So you have to contribute at least a minimum of 500 per month for the next two years. Okay? So this one, this product is for um, yung ating uh, disciplined investing. Baga parang mandatory yung nagiging ano natin. May auto-debit feature siya. For others, you have the liquidity funds for conservative funds, the metro money market, the short-term fund. For the moderate, we have the bond funds, yung max 3, metro max 5, metro corporate, metro unit paying. For the balance, yung ating medyo aggressive, metro, medyo, meron tayong metro balance fund, meron tayong metro equity, meron tayong metro Philippine equity index tracker fund, the high dividend yield fund, and the metro multi-themed equity fund. Across all funds, uh, minimum investment, aside from the Aspire Feeder, Aspire Feeder is 1,000 minimum. Ah. All other funds, the liquidity, the bonds, the balance, and the fund of funds, ang minimum investment namin for peso to ah, is 10,000. Okay? Minimum additional is 1,000. The additional is not mandatory unlike the Aspire Feeder Fund. So yun lang yung difference niya. When it comes to fees, ang fees nito would range around 0.125% per annum to 2%, depending on the fund. Okay? So you, you can actually visit the website below for you to be able to distinguish kung ano yung mga details, specific details. Kasi meron yung what we call uh, the information sheet about these funds. May kita mo doon what would be the holding period. Holding period nga pala namin across all funds is just 7 days. Uh, across all funds yun. Peso or dollar. Um, may kita mo doon the exception date what, what was the historical performance of the fund saan siya allocated what would be the top 10 holdings of the fund so better to visit that site para at least malaman nyo what are the characteristics of those sites next slide I think would be the dollar yan yung ating liquidity meron sa dollar meron din tayo liquidity funds meron tayong money market meron tayong short term for the bonds we have the dollar max 5 and the metro asian investment grade fund so yung bond fund natin more for moderate aggressive aggressive funds natin are the feeder funds these are globally invested the metro world equity the metro us equity uh, the us investment grade corporate bonds the japan feeder and the eurozone equity feeder fund okay so you can visit the website para at least mas malaman nyo kung ano yung mga specific details of these funds Okay. okay, last slide please. 
Okay. So if you want to invest, you initially have to go to the branch. Kasi nandun ang mga forms. We need also the KYC or the Know Your Client. Andyan din yung you have to answer the suitability assessment form. Yan. Andyan yung uh, uh, other informations that we need, yung application forms nandyan. Yung suitability assessment form, yan din yung gauge kung anong type of investor you are. If you're conservative or aggressive or moderate. No, nandun yan. Sasagutan mo yan. Merong questionnaire doon. And then itatali namin yung questions. Each question, each question has a score. The higher score you have, the aggressive investor you have, you are. The lower score you have is medyo uh, conservative investor ka. Okay, so initially you have to go to the branch, but then after you can enroll it sa Metro Bank online. Even for existing clients, if there's already existing clients here of um, of UITF or My Choice Investment, you can already register sa online. And of course, if you have any other questions, you may contact your branch, your preferred branch, for any information. Uh, about UITF. Okay, so before I go, uh, let me just have this uh, ending remarks. So investing in an asset with little or no knowledge is quite dangerous and sometimes it could result to uh, huge capital loss that may result to usually anxiety and stress. Diba? So most likely, mas best pa rin if you leave it to the experts. Eh, diba? So I'm not saying that don't dwell first. Now, don't dwell on direct investments like bonds or stock market. No? Again, it depends on you. If you want to advance more, then you have to research more. But if you have little or no experience at all in investing, you better the best option for you is to inv invest in my choice investments no? where you can enjoy convenience, affordability, and of course, the, the fund managers, the expertise of the fund managers. Again, don't be afraid in investing or don't be afraid in the risk in investing because the biggest risk of all is not investing or, or not taking in not taking an, or any risk okay thank you very much thank you so much lawrence for that comprehensive presentation uh, we now open the floor to questions from the audience please type in your questions in the q a box found on the lower part of your screen for us to be able to address them. Now, to start the panel discussion this afternoon, let me introduce to you our panelists for today. Together with Lawrence, is, uh, we are joined by Mr. John Monsaya. John currently heads the Portfolio Solutions Department of Metro Bank's Trust Banking Group. The team specializes in providing investments-based answers to various portfolio needs and John has been in the industry for the last 11 years. Hi, John. Again, um, to hi, our audience. Hi, Nicole. Good afternoon, everyone. Kindly type in your questions in the Q&A box found on the lower part of your screens. Now, um, let's set the ball rolling with the first question. Um, first to be addressed to Enzo. Um, we have a question here. Okay. Kailangan po ba na malaki ang laman ng account para maging qualified para makapag-invest? Mm. I think this is a good question. <laughs> yes. For me, that's, I think, one of the advantage of investing in a My Choice Investments or UITF. Because yeah, with just a minimum investment of, let's say, 10000 or even 1000 you can already have access to different financial markets. No? So I think, again, like what I've said earlier, that's the reason why this type of, this type of funds exist. It's for us retailers to have access to financial markets. Agreed. Short but sweet. Uh, um, again, for as low as 1,000 pesos, right? Anyone is already qualified to be able to invest. Thanks, Enzo. Um, for the second question, we have uh, addressed to John. Um, this is a good one. With all the different headlines in the news that we're, we're seeing right now, is it actually okay to, to invest? Well, yun yan, no? as um, Enzo mentioned earlier, it really depends on the risk tolerance of the person investing. Now, um, in my personal opinion, despite all the um, headwinds that we're seeing locally, globally, um, there's always going to be pockets of opportunity that investors can, can really invest at. Now, as Enzo said, Paano ako magda-drive papunta dun sa pocket of opportunity na yun? Hindi ko alam kung saan ako pupunta. So, um, especially for the beginners out there who really want to test the waters in investment, it's really good to at least 
seek the help of one. Hanap ka driver, book ka ng Grab para at the very least, no, uh, in terms of opportunity, you get to experience how to invest and you have a partner with you to help you learn along the way. Thanks. Thanks for that, uh, John. Um, it, it's, it's really um, not uh, one size fits all kind of uh, answer uh, of question and that it really is dependent upon um, a certain investor's uh, risk profile, risk appetite. Um, maybe lastly, uh, this one goes to the both of you. Um, personally, man, how do you manage your emotions when it comes to market volatility? John, you want to go first? <laughs> okay, emotions. So basically, some things. It's an old saying, no? um, greed and fear are not very good emotions to really drive investment decisions. So how I do it personally is I make sure na I don't time the market. If I have a goal, I stick to my path. And what's important is I allocate a little bit of my um, salary on a regular basis. I automatically put it in my investments. And what's important, at least for me, is not what's happening in the present and in the short term. It's more on how long is my target or my um, goal and um, will my investment outlive or will my investment last longer than whatever volatility that's happening or whatever um, celebration is happening uh, in the current market mood. So, I, ganun lang talaga. You time it in, in, such a, in such a sense that you contribute regularly regardless of what's happening. Mangyayari doon, I might enter into um, I might enter na mataas yung presyo, but there will be times that I'll enter at lower prices and that should even out in the long run. I actually agree with John. You know? uh, again, like what I mentioned earlier, before you invest, you need to have an objective. Okay? Kasi yung, pag may objective ka, you can't control your emotion, whatever is happening around you or the investments or the economy. You know? So as long as you have those objectives, you just have to stick with it. Okay, so kung ang, long, kung ang horizon mo is like five years from now, regardless of what's happening in the market, regardless of what's happening in the economy, you have to stick to that. Kasi yun yung naging purpose mo why you invested. Eh. So you have to be disciplined in uh, sticking to your objective. Kasi the reason why uh, some of the investors medyo agitated pag may nangyayari in the market is because they invested without any having... Any, any objective in investing. Eh. Kaya pag may mga jitters in the market, yan, natataranta na. Should I cut loss already? Or kailangan ko na bang umalis? Kailangan ko na bang mag-cash muna? But if you have an objective, let's say yun nga, five years, you have to stick with that. Kung lalo na kung wala pang five years, di ba? let's say, naka-invest ka, one year pa lang. And then, nga, nagkaroon ng market jitters or nagkaroon ng market uncertainties, then ask yourself, is this something na if I invest, makakatulog pa ako ng gabi. That's also important, right? So, yung, yung, yung peace of mind and yung comfort mo. If you're no longer comfortable, then kung you're at a loss, then go, cut loss ka na. But if you, you stick to your objective na five years, no, I have to stick with this by hook or by crook. I have to stick with this objective kasi ito yung purpose ko in investing. Then, stick to that. So, that's how I control my emotion when it, when it, uh, whenever there's uncertainties in the market. Thanks so much, Lawrence and John, for, for sharing your, your insights on that one. And um, I think there being no more questions on the chat box, um, that's it for our Q&A portion. Again, uh, thank you so much to the both of you. Now, before we move to the last part of our program, we would appreciate if you could spend a minute or two in answering our short survey. We will be flashing our QR code on the screen. You can scan the QR code to access the survey and that your feedback would be very helpful as we continue improving our webinar series moving forward. So again, um, just quickly scan the QR code and access the survey. Again, thank you so much to our speakers for giving us 
uh, an insightful discussion about investing. And of course, to our audience, to each and every one of you who joined us in this afternoon session. We are very excited to be part of your financial journey through My Choice Investment, and we are looking forward to seeing you in our next episodes. This has been your host, Nicole. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon.